Howard Safer, former police commissioner for New York City, is with us. Uh, commissioner, it's like the Wild West. You got, you got, now you got drive by by moped in New York City. 44 people shot in Chicago. Now it's 45, went up in the last uh, 15 minutes. Five people shot on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. What's going on? What's going on is we're going back to the bad old days. We have vilified the police. We are defunding the police. We have come up with these crazy bail laws that release known felons who have been convicted of the same crimes they continue to perpetrate. And we are sending a message to criminals that you don't have to fear the police. You know, back in when I was commissioner and Commissioner Kelly and Commissioner Bratton, the only people who needed to fear the police were criminals. So they kept their guns home. They were very careful about what they did. And they went to other places than New York City if they were committing crimes. But the fact is, if criminals don't fear police, if there's no accountability and certainty of arrest, they're going to do what they've always done, commit crimes. Do you think there's been a, a, a change of atmosphere, something that's more lenient, that they think they can get away with it? What's behind that to be so what's brave? Be, what's behind it? Primarily uh, leftist politicians like in Seattle and New York and Portland, who have ceded their cities to Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Uh, I was amused, although in a strange way, by the Seattle mayor who ceded a whole part of her city uh, to Black Lives Matter and is now calling for more police and more order because the truth is we're listening to the loudest voices. The vast majority of Americans respect police. They want to go about their lives in peace. And we are listening to these radical groups and what's going to happen is, you know, in New York City in 1994, there were 2,500 homicides. It was a terrible, dangerous place. We're headed in the same direction throughout this country unless we do something, and we do something now. As the police commissioner down at 1PP, uh, uh, 1PP is one police plaza. Uh, they call it 1PP. You know what it's like when you get that call in the middle of the night when uh, one of New York's finest is shot. Thankfully, the lieutenant, we've got that video right now. Let me show it to you. Lieutenant shot in the ankle. He's going to be okay. But what's striking about this video is that the suspect, first of all, the guy, uh, the suspect's a suspected gang member. He's been arrested 25 times. He was arrested in November. They say he had a semi-automatic, loaded semi-automatic on him. The guy then gets back on the streets. A judge let him out. $30,000 oh, bail. And they, in this video, Commissioner, they keep on saying, stop, stop, stop. But the guy's not listening to law enforcement. You know, when I grew up, you, it, a police officer says something, respect the police officer. If the mayor of New York City and the president of the United States uh, indicts police by saying they're racist and brutal and they're going to be held accountable instead of saying that criminals are going to be held accountable, that's what we're going to have. This was disgraceful. And what, what else was disgraceful? You know, when I was police commissioner, any time a police officer was injured, I arrived and so did Mayor Giuliani. Mayor de Blasio didn't even show up. We're very lucky that this lieutenant was not injured more seriously. Uh, this is out of control. It's a national crisis, and we need to do something about it, and we need to do something now. I mean, when I left New York City, it was the safest large city in America, and the country was very quickly uh, following behind us. Now it's going in the absolute opposite direction, and it's because of not holding criminals accountable. You can't have somebody who has 25 arrests uh, found with a loaded gun back out on the street. You know, we talk about social programs. These criminals don't care about social programs. They don't care about their economic background. They care about committing crimes. And until we realize that, we're going to have the same thing that's going on all over this nation. And that's very, very sad. Yeah, this alleged uh, gang member uh, doesn't, doesn't, of course, he's a criminal, allegedly, you know, comply with the orders of the officers who are telling him to stop. You pointed something out. We've uh, put an uh, inquiry into the city hall uh, in New York City mayor's office about the uh, mayor's whereabouts because it is traditional for a mayor, the mayor of New York City, to show up at hospitals when a police officer is shot. Uh, uh, finally, what do you think it will finally take to try and get back to what happened? When, when you uh, took office, uh, when Mayor Giuliani took office, there was the broken windows theory by Jack Maple and others, which show, went after small crimes turnstile jumping, squeegee men, the guys who would stop at the windshields. Is there a deterioration of the quality of life in some of these cities that is not being addressed, do you think, by some? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at this uh, statement of a district attorney in California, 
saying he's not going to prosecute any uh, thefts from stores under a thousand dollars. And right after that, criminals of broad daylight going into the stores and stealing things under a thousand dollars. Broken windows is very clear. If you deal with small crime, you deal with big crime. Uh, when I became police commissioner, there were 250,000 people jumping over turnstiles every month. It was like an Olympic sport. We started enforcing that law. We found machine guns. We found murderers. We found narcotics. And it sent a very clear signal. You can't commit crimes in New York and get away with it. What we're sending now is the opposite signal, saying commit a crime and nothing happens to you. Uh, the world is upside down, and we need to get it right side up. Former New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safer. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for your service to the city uh, and to law enforcement across the country. Uh, good to be with you, Eric. It's good to see you as always. Thank you. Alicia?